Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. I just got back from CES, and if you don't know what that is, that's the Consumer Electronics Show out in Las Vegas. I flew out there a few days ago, spent a few days walking around the convention center and seeing what's new and exciting. And in this video today, I wanna to talk about all the new stuff I found out there. Now keep in mind, the nature of this YouTube channel is the sports and fitness side of things, and that's mainly what I'll be focusing on. That's mainly things for wellness, for sleep, for activity tracking, and not all the other stuff, because there was a lot of other stuff. There was a new electric concept car from LG that had a freaking refrigerator in the trunk. There was a see-through TV from LG that you could literally see through until there was an image on it. It was madness. I even saw a robotic baby stroller, which I don't know if I would fully trust. But the point is, all we're gonna talk about today is what I found when it comes to things you would use while you're out on a run or on a bike ride. All right, I've got my notes here on my phone and we're just gonna go through this on the fly. I'm gonna talk about each of these items and why I thought they were exciting. And my first stop when I got to CES this year was to stop at the Garmin booth because as you know, I like Garmin watches. I've got my Forerunner 965 here. The Garmin booth was super cool. It was massive. They had everything from GPS watches to their automotive products. But what I thought was really cool was their full spread of Garmin wearable devices. They literally had every single current watch that Garmin makes and I've never seen them all in one spot. So it was pretty cool. Now keep in mind, Garmin didn't really have any new and exciting products at this event other than the new Garmin Lily 2 watch, which came out a few days ago and the new HRM Fit heart rate sensor, which is designed for women to use on their sports bra. They had both of those there to check out in person. Uh, unfortunately, I'm a guy, so I wasn't able to test it, but uh, they looked pretty cool and they are pretty exciting. I am hoping to get some samples of those so I can have my wife test them and I'll have to get back to you on that. But overall, it was a cool experience to see that Garmin booth. And I think the highlight of the Garmin booth was the ability to go hands-on with the $3,000 Garmin Mark collection, the Mark Carbon collection, which is the only Garmin watch that's ever been made out of carbon fiber. And at first, I thought this was a little bit gimmicky, but after holding it in my hand, it was pretty cool. You could feel that weight difference right off the bat. It was a really light device, but did still feel really high quality. Unfortunately, I'm not gonna buy one for 3,000 bucks, but it was still pretty cool to see in person. After the Garmin booth, I meandered my way around until I bumped into the Shox booth. And Shox, if you're unaware, is a company that makes headphones, particularly for activities, and they do focus on bone conduction headphones. At the Shox booth, they were presenting one of their new products called the Shox Open Swim Pro. What's really interesting about these new bone conduction headphones is that A, yes, they are fully waterproof. You can take them in the pool. You can go swimming with them. You can run in the rain with them. But B, they have 32 gigabytes of internal storage where you can actually store music from streaming platforms like Spotify. And when it comes to earbuds, there were more brands there. Like I did go by the Raycon booth who had some new really affordable options. And more importantly, I stopped at the Altec Lansing booth, which is a brand name I haven't heard in a long time. I feel like I had old computer speakers in high school from Alltech Lansing, but they had some really interesting sport earbuds that are coming out in 2024. And when it comes to headphones, there was one more product I want to mention in this video, and it's not actually these. I'm just hold holding them for demonstration purposes. That was the Mojawa Hapti Fit. So these are bone conduction headphones, but they're very unique because inside the bone conduction part of the headphones, is actually a heart rate sensor. And Mojawa does have a companion app on your smartphone that will collect your heart rate and distance data and combine it all into one file. So that's pretty interesting for users out there who do not wanna wear a GPS watch or something like that. Now you can do it just from your headphone. The Mojawa HaptiFit headphones are available right now at the time of filming this video. Unfortunately, they are very expensive, coming in at $300, which for bone conduction is a pretty premium price to have a heart rate sensor in there. What do you think about that? Let me know in the comments down below. Moving right along, let's talk about action cameras. And this was kind of surprising. One of the bigger booths at CES this year was actually from Insta360 of all things. And they had a giant booth. They had like a motorcycle all rigged up with uh, action cameras all around it. Now let's talk about smart rings because there was a whole bunch of different manufacturers there that make smart rings like the Aura Ring I'm wearing right now. When it comes to smart rings, there were brands like Aura Ring and Rincon there, which were showing off their current offerings, but nothing new except for a new color from Aura Ring in their raw titanium. And then there was Ultra Human, which offers the Ultra Human Ring Air, which is a great smart ring, and I did give it a pretty positive review in the past. However, Ultra Human was offering a new product called the Ultra Human Home. And this is something you actually leave like in your bedroom, on your nightstand, 
that monitors your air quality and the humidity. And this is something I found to be really interesting because it's sort of a companion to your smart ring. And another really exciting smart ring that I found at CES this year was at the Zep or Amazfit booth. Amazfit was there. They're showing off their a new Amazfit Active, which I reviewed a couple of weeks ago, but they also were showing off their new smart ring called the Helio Ring. Unfortunately, they did not have a ton of information about this new Amazfit Helio Ring, other than saying that was gonna come out in sort of the March, April timeframe. There was no pricing, there was no other information other than some colors and what it looked like. I did get to pick up one, feel the charger, feel, feel the hardware, see what it looks like, and overall, it looks like a really nice, low profile smart ring. So I'm pretty excited about it. But we'll have to wait and see until the Amazfit Helio comes out. All we can say for now is that it's a good looking ring and hopefully it's affordable. Next up, let's talk about power stations because all the major brands from Anchor Solix to Goal Zero and of course EcoFlow were there showing off their latest technology. And at CES, there were two main power stations that stood out to me. One was at the Goal Zero booth where they were presenting their new full lineup of lithium iron phosphate batteries. They had ones that were like 700 watt hours all the way up to a 4,000 watt hour giant battery that could be used to back up your entire home. And the other one that really piqued my interest was the massive EcoFlow Delta Pro Ultra. That's a long name, but this thing was a beast. So the EcoFlow Delta Pro Ultra is a $5,000 battery that can be used to back up your entire home or RV or camper in the event of an emergency. And this thing is huge. It's 7.2 kilowatts and it has a output of like 6,000 watts, I believe. It's also one of the few power stations out there that can output 240 volts without any additional accessories. It does that right out of the box. And yes, I know this is not really a fitness accessory or anything like that, but I do like power stations and it is something I found really interesting, so I had to mention it. Now that I've talked about some of the brands and products that you've probably already heard of, let's talk about some of the smaller brands and items I found at CES this year, because there were some really interesting things. First up was a company called Linksens, that's L-I-N-X-E-N-S, and they had a new product called the B1 Sweat Sensor. What this is is a little electrode that you wear on your arm while you're working out, and it'll actually collect your sweat and let you know how many electrolytes and what kind of sodium and potassium you're losing in real time during your activity. Their demo was really interesting. They had a guy running on a treadmill wearing the sensor and they were showing exactly what was happening to his physiology and his sweat as he ran. And I thought this was really interesting technology that I could imagine would be really useful in something like an ultra marathon or a marathon or even a 5K or something like that. When you're starting to get tired, you're hitting that bonk, it would be really nice to know when you should take in a gel or drink some electrolytes. Another trend I noticed at CES this year was blood pressure and not only only blood pressure sensing, but cuffless blood pressure sensing. As you know, right now, the real mainstream way to collect your blood pressure data is by wearing a cuff on your arm that inflates so the doctor can pick up your blood pressure. However, at CES this year, there were a bunch of different companies showing off how they can pick up your blood pressure without that inflating cuff. And one that I found really interesting was called Health Science. So this company seemed relatively small and the technology seemed pretty new, but from what they told me, they're about 95% accurate right now and they're striving to be about 98% accurate. And what they're using is a series of LEDs and light receivers to pick up your blood pressure without wearing that cuff. I'm not even sure how how they're achieving this, but it did look really cool and they did show me a demo in person and it did seem pretty accurate. Another product I found at CES was called Silent Light and this is something my wife would really appreciate because it's designed to prevent snoring and I thought this was really cool. So what this is is a small patch that you wear on the inside of your bicep, on your arm, while you're sleeping. And this patch emits a some sort of light that has a certain wavelength that interrupts the, the nerve in your arm that's somehow connected to your brain that's supposed to stop you from snoring. I don't know how that works, but they tried to explain it to me and I kind of understood it, but I still don't quite get it. And the final piece of tech I wanna talk about that I found at CES wasn't something that's really related to health or fitness, but it is related to smartwatches, in particular, the Apple Watch. So I bumped into a brand called the Mudra Band, and what this is is a replacement band for your Apple Watch. 
So this replacement band has a series of electrodes inside of it that can actually pick up your brain activity when you move your fingers. And they had a representative actually demoing this product at their booth. They had a big TV showing the brain waves and they showed how he can move his hand and it would be represented in the brain waves on the screen. And then he would ask people from the audience to move his fingers manually. And when people moved his fingers, nothing happened with the brain waves on the screen. It only did it when he actually manipulated something with his hand. And you're probably wondering why you'd want brain activity in your Apple Watch, but it's for a very specific reason. If you're aware, when the Apple Watch Ultra 2 and the Apple Watch Series 9 came out, they came out with a feature called Double Tap. And this Double Tap feature would allow you to pick up phone calls or set timers and stuff just by double tapping your fingers together. And this Mudra Neural Band takes it one step further. If you install the app on your Apple Watch, you, you can actually use your hand to manipulate things on the watch. And not only on your watch, you can manipulate things on the screen of your MacBook or your iPad. So they were showing a demo where somebody was playing music. They could literally pinch and drag the scroll bar on their music around to manipulate where they are in the song. Another demo showed someone resizing a window on their MacBook simply by grabbing the edge of it with their fingers and then scrolling it around in space using their hand. And it was like, really accurate looking. I didn't get to try it myself, but the demos they were doing was pretty mind blowing. Now, unfortunately the Mudra band is very expensive. It's $350 as an accessories to your Apple Watch. So it's not cheap, but if it does what it says, it's pretty cool. And I'm gonna try to get my hands on one because I'd love to see if it actually works. Now, other than those specific products in the fitness tech world, there are a whole bunch of other things like folding treadmills and stationary bikes for your desk at home. There were massage gums and there were like creepy looking masks that were supposed to make your skin better on your face that emitted red light. But these are the products that stood out to me, the technologies that I found interesting, and hopefully you found them interesting as well. And now's the point of the video, I want to hear from you. Did you follow CES along virtually on Twitter or on YouTube or anything like that? Did you actually attend CES in person? Let me know in the comments down below what products or technologies were exciting to you. I would love to hear from you. All right, friends, that's all I've got for this one. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please consider going down and giving me a thumbs up and subscribing to the channel down below so you don't miss more videos from me in the very near future because there is a lot more coming up. Stay tuned to the podcast channel where I have another episode coming very soon. Check out my Instagram and follow me over there. Do all the things in the comments down below and I'll see you next time. All right, friends. Bye. bye.